This presentation on the seven stars and candlesticks in the book of Revelation is my own work and is not affiliated with religious doctrine or anyone else's research. In Revelation chapter 1, it explains that the book of Revelation was written by John and sent to seven churches in Asia. It says in verses 9 through 16 that John was in the spirit and heard behind him a voice telling him to write down what he saw and send it to the seven churches that are in Asia. Then he turned around to see who was talking to him, and he saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of them, one like the Son of Man, who was holding seven stars in his right hand. So we'll take note of what it's saying. Again, John was in the Spirit and told by a voice to write down what he saw and send it to seven churches. Then he turned around to see who was talking to him and saw someone who looked like the Son of Man, which we know means descendants of humans, and this person had seven stars in his right hand. Then verse 20 explains that the seven stars represent the seven angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks represent seven churches. And the word translated as churches, number 1577, also means assembly of people. So we'll take note of that as well. The seven stars represent seven angels, and the seven candlesticks represent seven churches or assemblies of people. Then chapter 2 says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, I know your works and your labor and your patience, and how you cannot bear them which are evil, and you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. But notice he's not talking to the church of Ephesus here. He's talking to the angel of the church of Ephesus. So we'll add that here. He's talking to the angel of the church of Ephesus in verses 1 through 6. Then notice verse 7 says, let those who have an ear hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So the Son of Man is talking to the angel in verses 1 through 6. And in verse 7, he says the Spirit will talk to the churches. So to the churches or the assemblies of people, the Spirit will talk to them, it says. So this is primarily directed toward the angels of the churches, not the churches themselves. He tells John to say to the angel all these things in verses 1 through 6 and to the church itself in verse 7. But notice what he says to the angel in verse 2. He's saying there are those who claim they are apostles, but in reality they are liars. So we'll add that here as well. Some who claim to be apostles are liars. And notice in verse 7 it says, and unto the churches to him that overcometh I will give to eat of the tree of life. So of those in the seven churches, those who overcome will eat of the tree of life. So in verses 8 through 10, he's addressing the angel of the church of Smyrna, and he adds another very important point here. He says in verse 9, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So we'll add this as well. Some who claim to be Jews are actually the synagogue of Satan, it says. Then notice verse 11 is addressed to the churches. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. So we'll add that to the churches or assemblies of people. He says there will be no second death for those who overcome. Then in verses 12 through 16, he is addressing another angel, the angel of the church of Pergamos. So we'll add that here. The angel of the church of Pergamos is being addressed in verses 12 through 16. Then he addresses the churches themselves in verse 17. Again, he says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So again, it's the Spirit that will talk to the churches or assemblies of people. And he says, those who overcome will eat of the hidden manna and will be given a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no one knows except the one who receives it. So we'll add that as well. Those who overcome will receive a white stone with a new name. Then verses 18 through 25 addresses the angel of the church of Thyatira. So we'll add that. And in verses 26 through 29, he's addressing the churches again, the overcomers. He that overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So to the churches or assemblies of people, whoever overcomes will rule with a rod of iron and be given the morning star. Then chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, are addressed to the angel of the church in Sardis, and it says that angel has a name, but is dead. 
So the angel of the church of Sardis has a name but is dead. Then verses 5 and 6 seem to refer to the churches. Those who overcome will be clothed in white and their name will not be blotted out of the book of life. So the overcomers' names are in the book of life. Then verses 7 through 11 address the angel of the church in Philadelphia and again repeats in verse 9 that those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews but are not and lie, they will be made to worship the angel of the church in Philadelphia. So we'll add that here. Then in verses 12 and 13, it again addresses the overcomers, which seem to refer to the churches or assemblies of humans. And it says, overcomers will be made pillars in the temple of God and the name of God and the name of the city of God will be written on them. And that city of God is New Jerusalem and it will come down out of heaven. So that's important. It's telling us the city of God is in heaven and the name of that city will be written on the overcomers, the seven assemblies of people. Then in verses 14 through 20, it says to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, I will spew you out of my mouth because you say I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. So that's the angel he's saying is rich and increase with goods. Then to the overcomers, he says he will grant to them to sit with him on his throne. So Revelation chapters 1 through 3 are talking about something in a code language. It seems to convey the message that there are some angels who are not approved by the Elohim, and they will be judged just like everyone else. This seems to be explained in the book of Jude, which only consists of one small chapter and is placed just before the book of Revelation in the Bible. It says in verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Then it says in verse 6, The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains. And in reference to those angels which left their own habitation, it says they go after strange flesh, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, and they are filthy dreamers that defile the flesh. They speak evil of dignities. They are spots in your feasts of charity, clouds without water, trees without fruit, twice dead. And this is a big clue in verse 13. They are wandering stars. It also says they are murmurers, complainers, but have men's admiration because of their advantage. They are mockers and they do not have the spirit. So this is one very brief book that precedes the book of Revelation. And it tells us that the ungodly angels crept in unawares. They left their own habitation and are referred to as wandering stars. Then one chapter later in the first book of Revelation, we're told the stars that are angels are referred to as the seven stars. A simple Bible search reveals that the phrase seven stars is used only five times in the whole Bible four times in the book of Revelation, and one time in the book of Amos. We just looked at the four times that it's mentioned in the book of Revelation, and in the book of Amos, it occurs in chapter 5. It says, Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, maketh the day dark with night. The Lord is his name, that strengthened the spoiled against the strong. And this word translated as Lord, number 3068, is Yahweh. So it's saying here that Yahweh is his name. Yahweh is his name that strengthened the spoiled, in other words, the rotten fruit. Yahweh strengthened the rotten against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They abhor him that speaks uprightly. Your treading is upon the poor. I know your mighty sins. They afflict the just. So we already know the Bible tells us Yahweh acts as the beast, number 9 and 10 here. In number 8 here, Deuteronomy 32, we're told Yahweh is the name that was published and given credit for the Elohim's greatness. The dragon, we're told, gives power to the beast, number one here. In other words, it seems to say the dragon is the one who invented the name Yahweh. The dragon, we're told in number six here, has angels, in other words, messengers. So the dragon, number six here, has angels or messengers, and we're told the seven stars represent angels or messengers. Specifically, they appear to be the wandering stars mentioned in the chapter before, the ones who left their own habitation. This connects back to the sons of God that came down to earth in Genesis 6. The connection between the sons of God and the dragon, numbers 11 and 12 here, 
is found in these verses here, which we discussed in a previous video. In Daniel 8, we're told, at the time of the little horn, which comes out of the ten kings, the army of the stars fell to earth, the oppressors. In Revelation 12, we're told the dragon was cast out into the earth after the war in the sky. In Daniel 2, it tells us, at the time of the ten kings, they shall mingle with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in Genesis 6, we're told the Nephilim will be in the earth in the days when the human population begins to multiply, and they are the sons of God who mate with humans and have children with them. All of this seems to correspond to the time period that started around 1945 to 1947. We looked at this in a previous video. And as you can see, the root of the word Nephilim, Nephal, is also the word used in Daniel 8. It means fall. So the dragon represents what some call the fallen ones, what Genesis 6 calls the sons of God, and what Jude calls the angels or wandering stars who left their own home. So the dragon gives power to the beast with seven heads and ten horns, which is Yahweh, the name that was published to take credit for what the Elohim did. And now, as we continue to follow these codes, we see confirmation of that again. Amos 5 tells us Yahweh made the seven stars, and the word translated as make, number 6213, also means to deal with. So it's saying in verses 8 through 12, seek him that deals with the seven stars, Yahweh is his name, that strengthen the spoiled against the strong, your mighty sins they inflict the just. So Yahweh, the beast, who is given power by the dragon, the Nephilim, the fallen ones, it says, deals with the seven stars. Now notice the word translated as seven stars in Amos 5, number 3598, was translated as Pleiades twice in the book of Job. And in Job 9, it confirms Yahweh deals with Orion and the Pleiades. Again, the word translated as make, number 6213, also means to deal with. So the books of Job and Amos confirm that the seven stars refer to the Pleiades, and Yahweh deals with them. So the Pleiades are a star system in the constellation Taurus that consists of seven visible stars. And it may be meaningful that in recent times, there are many people claiming that extraterrestrials from the Pleiades are communicating and interacting with humans. A 1992 book called The Bringers of the Dawn was written by a woman who claims she received telepathic communication from the Pleiadians. And since then, there are others making the same claims. And according to the prophetic biblical texts that have been proven accurate again and again over literally thousands of years, the Pleiades, or the seven stars, are dealing with Yahweh and are ruling or presiding over the seven churches or seven assemblies of people on the earth. And some of them who were reprimanded in Revelation seem to refer to the wandering stars in Jude, the angels who left their own homeworld to go after strange flesh and mate with humans. So many people believe the Pleiadians are beautiful humans, but the accurate biblical texts say they are using an image technology that makes them appear beautiful, and they're not human or even humanoid. And we know that because Daniel 2 tells us their seed will not cleave to our own seed. In other words, they're a different species. So in Revelation 1 through 3, the one like the Son of Man is primarily speaking to the seven stars who we're told preside over the seven churches or seven assemblies of people. In other words, it may be giving us a clue that these seven stars or the Pleiadians are ruling over the humans. But notice in Revelation 1 verse 11, the one like the Son of Man tells John to write what he sees and send it to the seven churches in Asia. Then in verse 12, it says he stood in the midst of seven candlesticks. We're told later in the chapter that the seven candlesticks represent seven churches. But the question is, why is it necessary in verses 11 and 12 to use two different terms for that? Why not simply refer to them as seven churches or seven churches in Asia? It seems the code phrase, seven golden candlesticks, adds an unnecessary complication 
if it simply refers to the seven churches in Asia. In addition, Zechariah 4 mentions the seven lamps, and we know the word translated as lamps, number 5216, also means candle. So Zechariah 4 says the seven candles are, in verse 10, the eyes of Yahweh, which run to and fro through the whole earth. We looked at this in a previous video. So the seven candles go forth through the whole earth. That means they cannot be the seven churches in Asia, but instead refer to seven assemblies of people, as the word church is defined in the text, that go forth over the whole earth. John was told to send the writings to seven churches in Asia. That part is clear. And we're told the seven stars or seven messengers presided over those seven churches, which were Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And it may be that they presided over those churches of early Christianity because they were controlling the religious system. We're told the dragon gave power to the beast Yahweh, who the two witnesses, the Christians and Jews, worship, in spite of the fact that Joshua warned them not to worship Yahweh and that they would be witnesses against themselves if they did. So it's clear that the seven churches in Asia refer to the literal founding of Christianity. But Revelation 1 does not say the seven candlesticks represent the seven churches in Asia. Instead, it says they represent seven churches or assemblies of people throughout the whole earth. And in the previous video, we found an interesting correlation between the seven candlesticks, which may refer to the entire population of seven billion people that are currently on the planet, and the two candlesticks, which seem to refer to the two billion Christians and Jews currently on the planet. So in chapters 1 through 3 of Revelation, it seems the one like the Son of Man is judging the seven angels of the early churches of Christianity, and it seems clear that some of them are fallen angels, the dragon who gave power to the beast. And notice the one like the Son of Man, while he's judging the seven angels, doesn't judge the humans at all. Instead, he says those within the churches themselves, if they overcome, they will receive reward. In other words, if they can overcome the deception instead of following it and worshiping it, they will be rewarded. So the seven stars are the seven angels or messengers that Yahweh deals with, and the Bible itself associates the seven stars with the Pleiades star system. Those angel stars are referred to as the wandering stars who left their homeworld in the book of Jude, which precedes Revelation. The seven angels were told presided over the early Christian churches, which the Bible says were deceived by the dragon and currently worship the beast. Those seven angels are or will be judged by the one like the Son of Man, that's what Revelation 1 through 3 seems to be telling us. This seems to make sense, except for one thing. Verse 16 says the seven stars are in the right hand of the one like the Son of Man. In Matthew 25, we're told when the Son of Man comes, he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king shall say to them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you. But Jude tells us the wandering stars, the angels who left their home world, were ungodly men. So how can they be on the right hand of the Son of Man in Revelation 1, verse 16? There are a few possibilities. First, the one like the Son of Man, who holds the seven stars in his right hand, is the same person Daniel described as the Ancient of Days. In Daniel 7, verse 9, it says, The Ancient of Days, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head, like the pure wool. Then in verse 13, it says, One like the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. So this makes clear that the one like the Son of Man is not the same person who has a white garment and hair of wool. This person is known in Daniel 7 as the Ancient of Days, and it's the same person described in Revelation 1. So Revelation 1 is telling us that the person who holds the seven stars in his right hand is not the Son of Man, but the Ancient of Days who is like the Son of Man. 
So if the seven stars include some of the fallen angels, as it seems to indicate, it does not contradict Matthew 25 or any other scripture pertaining to the Son of Man, because the Ancient of Days is clearly a different person. Also, we're told the seven stars refers to the Pleiades star system, and their location is at the tip of one of the extremities of the constellation Taurus. In the northern hemisphere around the winter solstice, this constellation turns upside down and can look not like a bull, but more like a person with two legs and two arms reaching upward. When viewed this way around Christmas time, the Pleiades are literally in the right hand of this person. So the code about the Ancient of Days holding the seven stars in his right hand may simply be confirmation that the seven stars do refer to the Pleiades star system, and it may also be a clue that the Ancient of Days refers to the constellation Taurus. We don't know that for sure, but that's a possibility. In addition, there are several scriptures that indicate Satan stands at the right hand, such as Psalm 109.6 and Zechariah 3.1. Notice Zechariah 3 is right before chapter 4, which told us who the seven candlesticks are. And it's saying here, Satan stands at the right hand. Psalm 144 says their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. In Lamentations 2, another code chapter we're led to again and again, it says Adonai cut off the horn of Israel and drew back his right hand. He stood with his right hand as an adversary. And finally, in Matthew 5, Jesus said, If your right hand offends thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Genesis 48 may add some clarity to this as well. In verse 13, it says, And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand, toward Israel's right hand. A simple diagram of this shows that one who is in the right hand of Joseph is also in the left hand of Ephraim and vice versa. Those in the left hand of Ephraim are in the right hand of Joseph. If the Son of Man is brought near to the Ancient of Days, as Daniel 7 says, then the right hand of the Son of Man may correspond to the left hand of the Ancient of Days. That's a possibility. This would mean that whether one is a sheep or goat is relative to which body they belong to. So the seven stars in the Bible refer to the Pleiades star system. So it seems to say at least some or all of the seven stars refer to the angel stars in the book of Jude, which left their own habitation. And again, we're told judgment is passed on to them in Revelation 1 through 3. And the seven candlesticks, we're told, are the eyes of Yahweh that go throughout the whole earth, who are seven assemblies of people who are also referred to as the overcomers. So that's it for this week. For more information, the whole series playlist, Bible's Countdown to the Asteroid, is linked here and also in the description below. Just click on Show More to open up more links. And if you like this video, please consider providing support. These presentations are funded by viewers like you, so thank you to everyone who's making this research possible. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.